Happy hunting. Hunt me. I am the hunted one. I'm hunting most things. That is Hansel. You can hunt. Long have you hunted me. You are being hunted. Top 10 curated steam hunts for the 18th of September 2018. Let's get into the hunts for today. First one is Cubex, the high altitude balloon payload. So this is a little set of boards uh, with a with a payload called the Cubic One and a thing called the Leo Bodnard B Tracker. So what this does is transmits SSDV images in JPEG at 320 by 240 as well as tracking telemetry. And uh, the B Tracker was an APRS beacon, which I have no idea what that is. The payloads reached a maximum altitude of 33,000 feet and transmitted down 50 images during its flight. After burst, the APRS tracker stopped and Cubis 1 lost GPS. However, it continued to transmit SSDV images. As predicted, the estimated landing zone is in the Pacific Ocean. Kind of cool that they've built this little thing, but supposedly... You can get the boards, get all the telemetry stuff, get all the download stuff, and uh, basically create your own, which is kind of cool. Um, so, I, I mean, this is completely beyond stuff I've ever looked at, so I don't necessarily know how all those boards hang together, but there's a whole, like, solar panel kit there. It's a dedicated board with what looks like a little, almost like a Raspberry Pi camera on the bottom of it. And um, 300 board is a long, long time since I've seen those two um, numbers and letters together. 300 board was slow as balls. Shift 450 hertz encoding RTTY, radio teletype. Wow, protocols I've never heard of before. Starting to, we're starting to see a lot of homebrew gear. It feels very much like CB radio days, where people are like hacking together like stuff that would normally be out of our reach as hobbyists and now you can download download stuff open source and buy the the boards to make your own stuff imagine having your own kind of tracking satellites your own little loom doing live streaming above where you were just just crazy the technology that's out there these days next up is uh luxury limousines the classen luxury limousine uh this thing is unreal not only is it like a stitched together extra space but you can get one which is like an extender so it actually extends out pretty amazing if you're you're like living from the road and you've got the money for something like this because you can live in practically luxury you can park it up and then it extends out i'm not sure how that works actually does it just like drive forward do you just drive forward and it's like a latch thing so it part locks the back wheels and then you just like I presume it's front wheel drive this thing and then it just extends out so you've got all that space in the back there so you've got like your bed area and then you've got like a seated area absolutely sick i have no no idea how much these are but i i would say it's probably in the hundreds the thousands of pounds uh do go and watch this video that the way it extends out the extender one super sick all right third one Mainly from innovation today, uh, I pulled this one out because I thought this was really kind of innovative um, compared to the average uh, sled that you would have hanging up on the wall back in the day. Sled that folds flat. Innovative sled transforms quickly and intuitively from an easy to store product to a fun, high performance sled. So, I mean, sleds are sled, but the way that they've compacted this down, I just really like the styling of it. Somebody's really thought about how, how we can flat pack it and if you are like a traveler, digital nomad, on the go, you know, space is at a premium. So anything that you can just fold this flat and store it underneath the floor panels or something. Um, I mean, it's that. I mean, literally, look how many they've got in the back here. One, two, three. They've got four sleds in the back, whereas it used to be just fully built and hanging off the wall and getting in the way in your um, in your garage. And you can see how they flat pack against the wall now or sit on a ledge really fire these are the stuff these are the things i like to see on steam hunt because even though they're not necessarily technology products they probably have to use technology to innovate that design all right number four today is the developer box the sin quasar 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 e-series is a software development environment compliant with lanero's 96 boards open hardware specification so you probably know that there's been a lot of vulnerabilities on the Intel and AMD CPU platforms. 
in the last year or so to do with like heart bleed and, and just a whole bunch of like bugs in the actual low level system vulnerabilities that can you know be used against you and uh, slow down your machine remotely um, or malware can take take control of those um, those vulnerabilities but those bugs don't exist on as far as I know on the arm architecture so this board is quite interesting especially if you wanted to run a server a modern day server or even have a server in your RV or your caravan just use it as your maybe as a PF sense firewall front end or have all your comms on it or your routing on it this thing's got 24 cores on it now I don't know how good the performance is on this arm chip and I know it's kind of weak spec really in terms of memory it has got gigabit LAN on it though which makes me think this would be a perfect little server box dealing with all that stuff front of house stuff before they get on, before you get onto your local network and it will take up to 16 gigabyte of fast memory dd4 2133 with ecc so 24 cores i'm presuming all of the developer tools are a little bit clunky because obviously it's not going to take um advantage of the 24 cores it's going to take a little bit of time for custom code to come out that works with this but i do like the idea of arm chips multiple arm chips on one board which means it's a custom board which means that you've probably got a bit more redundancy than your average intel run of the mill uh xenon board for instance especially if we've seen all these vulnerabilities come out because it's funny how arm ar architecture is uh coming back around again it was originally like everybody got really buzzed up about it when arm first come out and then they kind of died off again when the 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 process got smaller and smaller on intel and they were more cost effective i've always liked arm i think it's a superior uh cpu but and the fact that like uh, apple used it in their phones for a while i don't know if they still use it in their in their modern day phones i think they use their own custom chips now i guess they've learned a lot from arm all right mozilla mixed reality is next firefox reality enter a new dimension another world uh, th this works with the Vive port, Oculus, and the Daydream. Content served fresh. Firefox Reality serves you the very best immersive games, videos, environments, and experiences from around the web. I think this is really smart of Firefox to run, uh, push out a separate browser just for VR because we don't need all that other stuff that's in there, and it's a dedicated process. You're only going to be doing certain VR activated activities, so you might as well have a platform that's super, super fast. Uh, I love to play with some VR stuff and some AR stuff. I think that's it's definitely the future. It's definitely where it's definitely where a lot of the next generation are going to be doing their spending their time and their work. Uh, literally, I'm a little bit scared of everybody sitting in offices with just one of these strapped in their head without any kind of see through. I, I I can't wait for the time when it's kind of integrated into glasses technology. I'm sure Warby Parker has got like money in this area. Treble is next. All you need to get your short, shortcast heard on Google Home and Amazon Alexa. Shortcast. Treble is the all-in-one platform to create and distribute snackable audio content on Google Home and Amazon Alexa. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I thought this was just like some kind of host that you uh, you push stuff to. Only Treble enables you to publish your first piece of content in minutes. We made a simple as answer and a few short questions. No need to wait for approval. Just sign up, record, or upload, and you're ready to start publishing. Anyone with a Google Home or Amazon Alexia device will be able to listen instantly. Distribute content on Google Home in addition to Alexia. I think we already get this on Anchor FM, which we use for our podcast. Which, by the way, if you're considering or thinking about doing a podcast, it is probably one of the best platforms for doing it. It's kind of uh, great hosting, great analytics. It's got a really simple interface for uploading stuff and it automatically distributes it to, I think, well over 10 different platforms, including Spotify and Apple and all that. Electra Solar is one, the solar powered aircraft, a two seater. Big, look at the wingspan on this thing. Big wingspan, solar, pan, solar panel powered aeroplane. And I think this is autonomous as well. So the way this works is that it, um, you can basically set it on autopilot and off it goes and and gets to the destina destination that you put in there uh the weird the the thing that i was thinking about when i saw this was how cool would it be to be able to request that plane to 
to arrive to your destination, arrive to your location. Uh, aircraft with two seats, the solar electric aircraft, is, aircraft has been designed for extreme records in range and endurance as well as for high altitude. Can fly only using the energy from the sun. Imagine being like just in some destination somewhere and be like, can you just send the plane over to pick me up? And this thing just automatically, autonomously like lands on a runway and, and then you jump in and off you go. Just crazy. We're living in a crazy technology world, people. Uh, going slightly the opposite way a little bit, but still uh, technology used to innovate this is Litter One, which is a renewable, it's a litter box with soya based wax coating, 100% pine pellet litter, one scoop, 30 waste bag, sides with soya based wax coating, painted false floor. So odorless, disposable, convenient. I think this is super, super smart, especially for people who are in transition and maybe only staying in like Airbnb accommodation with their pets for maybe a month or three months. Even for people who just hate the existing litter box situation, this whole like renewable thing, a recyclable thing, but 100% biodegradable. I mean, that's cool. That's innovation right there, especially because we use plastic. And I remember having cats the bloody boxes stank absolutely stank anything we can do to like deal with that uh this one four to six weeks has passed you has passed you put the kit in the trash open a new one that's already been shipped to you you choose to opt into the subscription service free of charge genius like just created a nice little sustainable business right there bomb nado is next the nado series built into home shelters jesus christ look at this thing bomb nado disaster shelter starting as low as twenty thousand dollars look at it look at the look at the design here on this look at the top of it you've got four inch air intake pipes reinforced steel heavy duty ar 500 bulletproof steel hatch gun storage wines i love the fact that they've got like guns above it and then wine underneath it what a combination NEC air filtration system, high slip ladder. Uh, what do you mean? It's highly slip. Oh, non slip. My bad. Uh, collapsible bunks, 24 inch storage space underneath on the floor. Um, kind of an interesting layout and configuration. They show you how it fits into a, a house. Like you just have it like lower down. You can have it for like cinemas. You can have it for like a wine thing, for a gun rack. Uh, you can have a little bed area. I presume you could have more than one of these if you wanted to around the house. I wonder if you can have them connected together. This thing is legit. Bomb shelter, tornado shelter, fallout shelter, safe room, gun storage, wine cellar. Uh, and obviously the price goes up the bigger that you want this thing. Going right up to the eight, eight foot by 20 foot at 35 grand, two bunk beds, three bunk beds, a couch, an air filter, and a toilet. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Get ready for the next level of human evolution. All right, finally today, to make sure that you can get back to your nuclear shelter, the Road Warrior Route Planner is a multi-stop route planner that helps you optimize schedule and navigate your routes. routes. Join the tribe and find out why hundreds of thousands of drivers depend on Road Warrior. I've never heard of this before. It's quite rare for me to come across an app that I've not seen before. This looks really, really cool. Our route planning algorithm is the best in the business. Reduces your cost by giving the most efficient route possible. Like, one of the things that we want to do, especially in the UK and in Europe, is we want to travel probably about 40 to 50 miles a day, depending on what we're driving, if it's an electric van or if it's going to be... Um, it's probably going to be electric, to be honest. And we're probably going to do it where we stay in a place for three or four days so that we can solar charge everything it's going to probably take three or four days at max five days of charging everything up and then drive another 45 miles and another 45 miles so anything that optimize optimizes that route especially if we can take in like two or three things within that day maybe even 60 miles and say we're okay to use them extra 10 miles because most of the electric vans right now as of today they've got like a 100 mile range so anything where we can say let's go here first let's go to this point of interest Let's go to a charge base uh, and then somewhere where we can like boondock for, for four days without uh, causing a problem. This could be really useful for that. Uh, I do apologize for my screen today. I, I seem to be having lighting issues, but we just have to go with it, right? 
Uh, that's it for me today. Those are my top 10 from about 150. I went down to 150 levels deep with that stuff today. This is what the site looks like as of 2018 September. Uh, all the links are on the right hand side. We have hundreds of them per day. We have about 11, 12 mods that go through 24 hour period to make sure that they are good for the, the guidelines and then they're, they're upvoted and commented on. And uh, if you're in the top 100 and your level's over one, chances are you're gonna get a, an upvote. When you click on any of them, they appear on the left hand side, clicking on the white button at the top, it takes you through to the URL from the hunter. Uh, if you want to add your own, you just fill out this form, put in a title, put in a subdescription, put in text into the body field, up to a thousand characters, add images, add some tags along the bottom, click on publish, it goes onto the Steam blockchain, but it also goes onto the Steam hunt for voting. That's it for me today. Um, hopefully that was useful. I will catch up with you tomorrow. Don't forget, I've done a unofficial Steam hunt course, which I'm adding bits to it as I can. Probably got about six or seven bits to add this week. But it's probably going to be ending up to about four hours of content all about Steam Hunt by the end of the month. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Repair the path of a steam. Smell steam. Stum nasi, what is a stum nasi? Stum machine. Why shouldn't the guy let off the steam? The steam.